Hey, Mark Rugen here with SA International. Thank you very much for watching this video. Today I'm going to talk about the top three tricks for printing great color through Flexi. Here's how I'm going to do it. First of all, I'm going to help you find and install ICC profiles right into Flexi. Couldn't be easier. Also, I'm going to show you how to saw proof your computer screen with your printed output. How many of us want to do that? And finally, matching customer colors with spot color matching. Let's get right to it. Now, why are ICC profiles so important? Well, take a look at this image here. On the left-hand side is how it might print if you don't have a good profile. And on the right-hand side is what happens when you have a good profile. So printing profiles, ICC profiles for your printer, very important to get the right kind of skin tones and vividness that you're looking for in your images. The other reason for a good ICC profile is just really getting that great photographic color on the left hand side again. Maybe without a good profile you might see uh, chalkiness or banding or even uh, you know image loss in detail and that sort of thing. If you look on the right hand side a good profile can brighten up those colors, those reflections. That's really what you're trying to attempt to do with good profiles in Flexi. So a good printer profile actually takes into account the printer itself, the nature of the printer, the paper or the media that you're printing on, and the ink type. Well, that's a pretty big chore. There's a lot of different kinds of printers and medias and inks out there. Where do you look for these things? Well, first of all, you can go to SA International. Flexi 11 and 12 users have a online cloud account and you can download those profiles right from the website. You can also go to the media manufacturers. They, many times if they're selling media for these printers, they'll have profiles as well. And you can also ask your reseller. Sometimes the better resellers will have profiles that they've made as well. It's all about adding those to Flexi. So let's, get, let's, let's find out more about how easy that is to do with Flexi. Now it's really pretty easy to add these profiles to Flexi. This is just an illustration here. Flexi 11 and 12 users have a cloud portion of the program on the right hand side and there's a button there, a little icon called Printer Profiles. When you click that it takes you right to the location where all the profiles are located at SAI. Otherwise, if you don't have those versions, you can use the website as noted on the bottom of this slide. It's pretty easy to add, and I want to do a live demonstration of this so you can see the amount of time involved. It's pretty quick, and it's very easy. Now, adding uh, profiles to Flexi, printer profiles to Flexi, and so forth, very, very simple, especially if you have version 11 or 12, because on the right-hand side there, you can actually see the cloud features, and there's that button that says Printer Profiles. Just click on that button. It'll start up your web browser and take you right to the SAI website. So you've got all your profiles in a single location. If you're not on 11 or 12, you can type in uh, that particular uh, website directly into your browser. It's found right up here on the top. Now, let's say we want to download profiles. You can see all the profiles that SAI actually has developed for all the different kinds of printer manufacturers out there. I'm going to choose Muto, for instance, and he's look at all the different models in here. So let's say we have a 1638. You just choose the printer make, the printer model, and you click download. What will happen is it will actually start to download that particular graph, that particular uh, zip file. It's in a zip format and it saves it on your hard drive somewhere. Now once that's actually saved, you can go right back into your, your production manager and, and actually that's where you want to go. It's the easiest way to do it. Just go up here to uh, production manager, just start your production manager. Here's my, my MUTO. Okay, I'm going to go to setup. And then I'm going to go to default job properties. That's really the fastest way to do this. You could, by the way, I could have done it right from production manager to start with. See, cloud for, uh, part of it is over here as well. But anyway, let's just go ahead and add these in. You want to unzip it into a folder of some kind. Go to the third tab, which is called color management. And basically that's going to uh, turn on or go to where all the color management takes place in Flexi, right? So you may not have any. It may actually have no color correction or something like that in here. You know, you might not have any profiles loaded yet, right? But uh, even if you do, you want to use color correction. Okay, you want to go to that where it says output profile. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and there's an add area right here. Just click add. It's going to open up the uh, uh, Internet, exp I mean, uh, excuse me, Windows Explorer. You're just going to explore right over to wherever you uh, unzipped that uh, file. In my case, it's on my desktop. Double click on it. 
and you can choose one or two or as many of these profiles as you want. Just click on the one you want, click open, and it's going to add it right into your production manager right here. Very, very nice. That's it. I mean, it's just that simple. When you click OK, you're done. And those profiles have now been added and you can now use them right inside of Flexi. It's just that easy. Most good media manufacturers also have ICC profiles for Flexi. All you have to do is just ask them for them when you purchase the media, whether you get that directly from the manufacturer or from a reseller. You can also search the manufacturer's website. Typically they'll have them online and you just download them like I showed you in the previous uh, video and you add them the same way. And another way is just to ask other Flexi users on some of the discussion boards that are out there. Wherever you find them, they're easy to add to Flexi. If you take a look at that photo on the right hand side there, that, uh, that gentleman is actually comparing printed output with what he saw in his monitor. You should be able to do the same thing, and you can with Flexi. It's very easy, and it's called soft proofing. Soft proofing allows you to simulate output right on your monitor. It's a method to see how your printer is going to print. It's easy to do in Flexi. Let me show you how. Now what I'm about to show you in Flexi is really easy to understand. If you take a look at this image on the left hand side is just an RGB uh, of red, green, and blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow that boxes it, vector boxes you put in Flexi, right? So that's the way it normally looks like, what it normally looks like on the monitor. On the right hand side is soft proofing. When you turn soft proofing on, it actually simulates what's gonna happen at your printer. Well, you know, those don't look very similar, do they? That's what I wanna teach you, how to make sure that and how to match as closely as possible what you're seeing on your monitor with what you're about to print. So let me let me do a quick demonstration for you. Now this is pretty easy to do, so just pay attention here. I'm just going to make a rectangle. I'm just going to draw a rectangle on the screen here, a certain size. You know, it doesn't matter what size it is, and I'm going to paint it lime green. All right, so that's the color that the customer's given you, and that's what you actually want to print. Well, what is the print going to look like? Well, your experience may may actually have already told you that's going to be a dull green it's not going to look very lime green like that nice and bright well you can actually tell flexi to simulate to show me what's going to print and that's called soft proofing right up at the top there's an icon up here called soft proof you can also find it in the view menu over here in case you don't find it up there and it might even be preview cmyk and some of the older programs but soft proofing i'm going to turn that on yep doesn't look anything like lime green what happened well, Flexi is applying the monitor profiling, it's applying uh, input profile, it's doing a lot of things. It's applying the printer profile to this particular color, but it's not doing it in the way that's managed properly. So you need to set it up correctly so you get as close as possible to that lime green. How do you do that? Well, you go to the edit menu and you choose color settings. This is where it all starts and you would do this for each file. It's, it's really pretty easy. Let me show you. First of all, monitor profile. Well, it's preset right now to Adobe RGB. That's just a default setting. It's really not a monitor profile. It's a very large color space. We're not going to use that for our monitor profile. Instead, we've actually made one for you called generic LCD monitor right here. I'm going to choose just that one for, to start with. You also want to set up the printer you're using, in my case, my Muto, and then the media that you're using. Now, watch the effect of just using this monitor profile, a good monitor profile for, for your particular uh, computer. Watch. That's closer. It's not that ugly green. It's at least a, a solid green, but it's still not lime green. So what's going on here? Well, we need to go back into color settings and also work with input profiles. Input profiles describe where the actual uh, image that you're trying to print uh, originated. What's the source of the image? What was the, what was the uh, profile or what was the sort of circumstances for color for that particular image? In our case, we created this uh, in Flexi on the monitor. We want to match our monitor. So I'm not going to use Adobe RGB. I might use that if I have Illustrator or Photoshop or something like that. Or if I have a digital camera, I might actually choose uh, sRGB. That's pretty common input profile for digital cameras. But in my case, I'm going to change it to my monitor profile because that's what I'm really trying to, to uh, match right now. Watch what happens. Click OK. Much better. So if I uncheck that, this is what my customer wants, and this is what I'm going to be able to provide them. Now I know there it's a little bit off, but that's normal. That's that's CMYK printing on printers, but that's pretty close to lime green. 
And what's really cool, I'm going to turn that off. Here's a nice little trick for you. Just go up to the window menu up here and click a, a new window. It's going to flash like that. And I'm going to make that also nice and full. And what did it actually do? What it actually did was it made a copy of the same image. And if you go to window now and choose tile vertical, you can put them side by side. This is actually the same image. They're not two different versions of it. They're the same image. Watch, I'm going to click on this side and move it. And the other side moves too. So it's actually the same square on both sides. What's really cool, left-hand side, I'm not going to use. Right-hand side, I'm going to click on that and do a soft proof. And then I can put my soft proof right by my window where the RGB colors are. And I can kind of compare and say, hey, maybe I need to make a few more adjustments or whatever. It's a nice way to kind of see what your customer is expecting most likely and what you're going to be able, able to provide them. That's soft proofing. It's an awesome feature and it's just that easy in Flexi. Now the third tip, which is also easy in Flexi, is the ability to tweak spot colors and to get a more definition of the color that you feel is the appropriate color. In other words, let's say we're trying to print this Pantone color here, this red color, and you print it out and it's not coming out exactly the color you expected. How do you tweak that? Well, instead of drawing a, you know, a 10 different boxes and then trying to change the percentage or maybe tweak the color and all that sort of thing, I mean, you can do it that way. We made it much easier in Flexi. We're going to show you how to tweak and match spot colors any way that you want. This is really cool. So the very first thing you're going to do in Flexi is you're going to create a color and then change it into a spot color. I'll show you that in the video. And then you want to export that as an EPS file format. So create the color, make sure it's a spot color, and then export it as an EPS file. I usually export mine right to the desktop. After we export that and it's on our desktop, we're going to go to Production Manager and click on our printer. We're going to start the uh, default settings, uh, again, default job properties. And then in that third tab, uh, about midway down, there's going to be a button called Color Mapping. We're going to click on that, import that particular spot color, and, uh, and it's going to import right over here into this menu on the right-hand side called Custom Spot Color Mapping. After we double click on that imported file, it's going to start another menu that's called Add or Modify Custom Spot Color. That's the menu you see on the left hand side here. And what we're going to do is there's a really cool thing that we can do. We can just hit Print Swatch. It'll actually send a file to your printer and it's going to print a chart out like you see on the right hand side there with numbers along the side, X and Y. All you got to do is pick the new number and insert it back in, update the color, and you've got your new spot color tweaked to the color you believe is right. So instead of drawing all the squares yourself, we take care of that for you. We make it easy in Flexi. So all you do is on that chart, pick the X and Y location of the square that you believe has the better color, whether it's red, green, blue, whatever color you want, you insert that into the closest matching swatch, like I've done here, six and seven. You click the update button, it will automatically update that spot color. From then on, it's tweaked, it's perfect, and it's just that easy. All right, so let me show you a demo here. If this is live, which is all I'm gonna do is draw a little rectangle like this and paint it some kind of color. Now, in this case, I'm using a Pantone. If you were using colors that are not spot color, all you gotta do is paint it that color. In this case, like it was just a regular red, an RGB red, go to your uh, color mixer over here and then change that into a spot color, just like that, either way, right? So if you got spot colors you wanna tweak or if you have a solid color you wanna make, just make sure it's a spot color. Once you get that done, what you wanna do is export that. So you go file and export. And I usually put them on my desktop, they're easy to see. And I name it the same color. So in, since I use my regular swatch table here with red in it, I'm gonna name it the same color. Be sure you spell it correctly and exactly as the same color that you're trying to make, okay? Let's save that as an EPS file on my desktop. All right, hit save there. When you get this image, I usually just, say, it says export pan color as a CMYK or RGB. Let's just do RGB, okay? We'll click okay on that. All right, now I'm gonna to go to production manager, okay? And here's my, my MUTO. And I'm going to go to Setup and Default Job Properties again. Pretty handy tool, huh? That go to that third tab over there, and that's where you're going to find color mapping. So checkbox is on. We're going to go color mapping right here, right? And then I'm going to import that EPS file. So I click on that, go to my desktop in this case, and I'm looking for the color red, right? So I'm going to find red in here, 
and there it is. There's my EPS file right there that's red. It's a spot color. Click open and it's going to show me how the ink is going to be used to create that color. So in this case, it's 80% magenta and 85% yellow. A little bit on the orangey side, right? Okay, so that's fine. I mean, that's no problem. We want to correct that. So I want to make a new red. So all you got to do now is once you see that, right, you double click on the red and that's going to bring up my custom spot color menu and I say print a swatch of that. Now it's going to print. You can do any kind of increment you want here. I'm doing 5% increments. You can do any kind of increment you want and make the, the width bigger if you wish to make the, the swatch table bigger. But let's just print this. So I'm going to hit print swatch. All right. Now I'm going to cancel on mine only because uh, I don't have my printer hooked up so I don't want this to actually print so I'm going to stop that. This is actually uh, printing this particular swatch table out, right? This is the swatch table that it's going to print. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stop that and put it back down in here and double click on it to bring up a nice big menu, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is I just want to rotate that and kind of show you what your output's going to look like. It's I'm going to resize this so you can really see it clearly. Okay, so that's what you're going to get. You, by the way, you could do this yourself if you wanted to. Okay, uh, let's just say in this particular case that uh, when I print this, okay, that the the red that I want that's that I think is better is at say, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's just say it's at at uh, two and and six here, right? So I'm at X at two and a Y of six. So whatever I choose, X and Y, just remember that number. Okay, go back over here. And in your default uh, job properties again, basically you can go back to that third tab. Now you, you would have printed this out and chosen that and you would still be in this particular menu. So you would still be right here. So you just type in the new values. I'd say I said two and six, I believe, right? I'm gonna hit update color. Watch over here in cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for this red color. I hit update, it puts, it automatically fills in what kind of changes I need to make or how the printer should print that particular red. If that's okay, if everything looks great, I just click okay, right? And I just close this out. And as long as I have that check mark, use color mapping, instead of printing my old red, it's now gonna use this new red. It's gonna use that new mixture of ink to produce the new red. Every time it sees the word red in your file, in other words, when you're creating something over here, and that color ends up being R-E-D, red, right? It's actually going to, you know, if that color is red, all right, it's actually going to use those new spot colors to print that red. You're going to have cool colors. You're going to be able to match those things. So, you know, a lot of times a customer will give you a uh, logo or something like that, and, and maybe everything's printing okay, except maybe one color needs to be tweaked a little bit. You can do that now very easily, and from now on, you'll, You'll, you'll be able to get a much closer match on most of those Pantone colors or any kind of spot color your customer gives you. It's pretty easy, isn't it? In fact, all three of those tips were pretty easy. I know you're going to benefit and you're going to get much better prints. So we just saw three tips for getting great printing from Flexi. Importing and, and installing ICC profiles, soft proofing, matching your monitor to your printer, and even tweaking colors. It's just that easy with Flexi.